Hey guys, welcome back to Goman Arts. My name's Joe Barlow, and today I've got another project deconstruction for you. If you've been watching the series so far, then you know I've been watching every single Marvel film and attempting to recreate a visual effect from every single one. This week I've watched Ant-Man, and I'm going to try and recreate the scene where he uh, first shrinks himself down into the bathtub. All these videos can be seen over on my Instagram before I create the Project Deconstruction here on YouTube. So if you're not following me already, follow me on Instagram, link in the description. And if you've not seen the video already, then here it is. Okay, so here's the scene from Ant-Man that I tried to recreate. Um, this is the first time Ant-Man tries on the suit and accidentally presses a button while uh, trying to avoid him, his friends seeing him in this crazy, uh, this crazy gap. So here's the effect, buttons pressed and Ant-Man shrinks down uh, all the way into the bath there. So it's a pretty cool effect. Uh, I love the way the camera just follows him down into this sort of level here and now we feel small as well and everything's massive and that focal distance uh that really really wide angle i think looks absolutely great but that's not what we did um we actually just did the uh shrinking effect which is this here so let's quickly just switch it to 0.25 watch it a little bit slower take this effect in and uh let's talk through it so ant-man button click Big flash is the first thing we have, this big flash of white, and then we have these sort of ghosty um, kind of outlines of Ant-Man, and these are uh, continue to sort of pump out of him as he shrinks one by one, and as you can see there, he falls, um, and that's pretty much it. So this was probably created um, using live action here, and that flash would have been a perfect opportunity to switch to a CGI character that would have been shrunk down, uh, and then these elements would have been added on afterwards. So what we're seeing now is probably all CGI, um, which was hidden behind that flash, which is sort of similar to what I want to do today. So let's head over to After Effects and uh, see how I created this. All right, so if we scrub through the composition here, then we can see that the final effect that I had was quite similar to the, uh, the Ant-Man film. We've got those outlines, we've got the falling, and we've got the nice camera following us down. And that, that's quite cool how I did that. Uh, we'll get to that a bit later on, um, but that was me on camera as well as in the footage. Um, anyway, so if anyone's been a long time follower of this series or, or even this, uh, this channel, you'll know that I actually made um, an Ant-Man video basically when the film first came out um, and it, it was the exact same techniques that I, I used to create this um, but I never made a tutorial or anything back then uh, so this is the closest thing we can get to that now the video is broken down into two shots we've got the actual fall and we've got like this little comedy moment at the end where it's just sort of a little bug uh, cracking into the ground that's not too hard to make so we're going to start with just that uh, and all this is, is a little bit of uh, footage of myself here, um, a bit of blur, load of rotoscope. In fact, if I take off the blur there, hopefully this is going to render in okay uh, with the rotoscope. You'll actually see that this little dot of, uh, of an insect, oh, let's turn these blurs off as well, um, is just some previous footage uh, that I used elsewhere. There I am, just this tiny little thing here. Um, it's the same footage that I used in the other shot. I just reutilize it to make this little comedy moment at the end. And uh, I try to get a sort of similar heavy depth feel on this. There's a bunch of blurs on there uh, with some Gaussian blurs there to sort of give this real sort of uh, depthy look into the shot to try and match what they, uh, they achieve with the bathtub. Uh, and finally, just a little crack texture there. Uh, so it looks like I fall down and smash into the floor. Now that's not the main effect we're here to see today, so let's go over to shot one. Um, again, hopefully this is going to render in okay. So we start with me sort of setting up the camera, and I did this as a little reference to um, the video I made way back whenever the original film came out. And then I step back and press my watch, and just before I do so, <laughs> you see all this uh, light happens. Now this is quite important. Um, I, I said in the in the breakdown of the actual shot that I assume that's where they switched to CGI. This is where I switched from uh, a tripod camera to me panning down. So everything after this flash, um, basically I'm rotoscoped in, 
uh, I'm comped in. There's nothing, nothing of me is real after after that flash there. So we go through, we press the the watch, and this is just built up with a, a bunch of levels. So if we just get rid of that, we'll actually see the cut um, is there. Now, if I turn some layers off and uh, just have a look again, let's turn that one on. So we start, we cut, I'm gone. Now, if I just invert what's actually uh, seen, what we have left is me, a bunch of lines, me shrinking down, and this is just me scaling some footage that I've, I've uh, freeze framed and just scaled down. We'll come back to this, um, this outline thing later on. And then just a bunch of blur on it. So I'm just scaling myself down. And once I've hit the bottom of that shot, that's where I've matched it up with that camera tilt. So basically I don't want it tilting too much just yet so I can get out of the shot. And then with nothing in shot, the, uh, the camera starts to actually sort of fold down to look down. And this is where I bring back in this, uh, this extra little bit of me. And what this is, it's me lying on my kitchen floor, uh, making it look like I'm sort of lying down and falling. This is something that we could have uh, puppet pinned, we could have removed the background of Photoshop, we could have done whatever with this, but in the end I just rotoscoped it, add a bunch of blur to it, um, and then just sort of scaled it down. So if we just leave those solo, let's take one last look at the actual footage. We've got me scaling down, moving out of the shot. And remember, this is where the camera is panning down onto me now. It's now looking down onto me, and we've got me sort of falling, all that blur, uh, that rotoscope. There's a little bit of motion there. I'm kicking my legs and waving my arms to make it look like I'm falling backwards. And that's pretty much the setup for the entire shot. The only other thing left to do is, of course, those sort of echoey outlines. Okay, so here you can see we've got a bunch of PNGs. Now this is a PNG sequence that I exported. Um, I've then brought it back in. And if we just take a look at the keyframes, you can see that they scale from 100 to like 2000, whatever. And while they're doing that, the opacity goes down. And what that's doing, if we just solo one, try and make sense of this, we're basically just scaling it up uh, like so. And that's flying towards the camera because it's fading out at the same time. It looks like it's sort of flowing through the camera, much like the Ant-Man one did. And when you do this all together, you end up with this sort of cool echoey floaty thing. I've then set it to screen so you can see through each individual one. And then I've placed that back on top of the footage here, uh, again with an add, and that gives us our echoey effect, this sort of ghosting, falling thing. Now, I've also added a radial blur to that, some displacement just to give it some movement. But you will notice that something has been done to it previous uh, to exporting it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Right, so this is probably the best way of uh, illustrating how I created those outlines while I'm shrinking. So this is the first bit of footage when I scaled down. So what I did was export this as a PNG sequence as we've already seen. And then I would have brought it back into After Effects and added these effects here. So if I just solo this, uh, we can see what we end up with. So the first thing we want to do is, of course, add a Find Edges. Now, this is what gives us our outline. And when we put that on Add, um, you can see that outline looks great. Uh, the other thing we want to go ahead and do is add some turbulent displacement. This morphs it around a little bit, makes it look a little bit off, uh, a little bit sort of smoky almost. Um, then we add a bunch of directional blur. This is going to help blend it all together, especially when there's multiple versions of that. I added a tint just to sort of make it a little bit more whiter because uh, when you do the find edges on its own, you do end up with uh, little tiny bits of other things in there. It's not quite just edge of this orange and this blue. So with that tint, it just made it all white, which is exactly what we want. And then the most important thing of this is the wind time, CC wind time. So if I turn that on, you can see there's loads of me now. And this is what drives this entire effect. The, the find edges to get the outlines and then the wind time um, just to sort of add some extra frames in and this this takes a look at your footage and sort of picks out frames from whatever you set it to so this is backward steps three I can I can extend that I can I can uh, change the forward steps uh, and this gives us that sort of echoey feel as it's falling 
and that gives us a nice shrinking effect. Of course, this one here uh, built pretty much exactly the same way, apart from uh, having to PNG sequence it so we can bring it back in and do the scale to it afterwards. But other than that, exactly the same. Uh, and that gives us our nice Ant-Man sequence. Uh, I added some glitch in at the start just to sort of make it look like I'm messing with the camera a little bit more. But that's it. That's that's everything we need to know about uh, Ant-Man. I'm going to go ahead and play this version and my original version uh, from when the film was released. So stay tuned for that. And uh, thank you for watching. So that was my attempt at recreating the Ant-Man shrinking effect from the film Ant-Man. As mentioned at the start of the video, I am uploading these over on my Instagram first, so do make sure you follow me over there. And if you've enjoyed the video, then make sure you're subscribed here uh, so you won't miss a thing. Until next time, thank you and goodbye.